Hello and welcome to the 12th and final SMD Power Talk for Social Media Today of the Year. Uh, through the, throughout the last 12 months, we brought you guests from across the G Plus world and beyond. And each of them have actually brought us a lot of uh, insights and have helped us broaden the conversation about social media and its impact on our lives. In this final one, we are exploring cooperation in social media. We are arguably in a very cooperative world and a very cooperative um, culture. And no small part in this has been played by Google+. Plus. But that doesn't mean that we are out of the woods in any sense of the word, and the world is not a, a garden of roses. So today, exploring those issues, we have two fabulous guests. We have Zara Altair, who at one stage or one part of her life, she worked with NASA. And we have John Keldon, who is the fantastic curator of the conversation community in Google+, and whose contact um, across the business world has also included Swiss bankers. So with, those, with that introduction, um, I'm going to start off with one very quick question. And the question is, cooperation today, how does it start? And let's take this question to Zara, please. How does it start? It's it's. I think it starts by listening. I think it starts by listening to what other people have to say and finding the resonant the points of resonance where where we are able to communicate and to develop and to develop conversation. Sometimes that works, sometimes that doesn't. And we're left in a place where where there isn't cooperation sometimes it's you know what I call detente um, we agree to disagree and we're not going to talk about it I guess is the way I would say it you know and sometimes it's um, and uh, uh, but we cooperate on other issues if that makes any sense then I think that's <laughs> fabulously quickly we got to the stage where we don't cooperate at all. Yeah. So. Exactly. <laughs> because, because the places where we don't cooperate are the places where we really need to look. Yes, I think I think you're making some very valid points here, Zara, straight away. And I think at the point, let's take this to, to John, please. Um, John, as the curator of a pretty deep and intellectual community, um, how do you start cooperation? Well, uh, Sarah made kind of the point, right, with listening. Uh, for me, when I started, I was basically clueless back in November 2012. Everyone else did Star Wars and Android, and I mean, the, the kind of the, the usual suspects in terms of communities are topic based. And I knew that I didn't want to do that. But what I wanted to do was kind of creating a space where we could sort of together hold space for a slightly different discourse. What I see is we're kind of gifted with a digital connectivity which we it's kind of beyond anyone's individual can how to actually make good use of that. Which means that for me that was kind of the obvious thing. Well let's gather together some of the brightest best and have a conversation around how to do that. So that is kind of and, and cooperation is uh, uh, one of those impossible words, right? Where it's anything from kind of trying to sort of game the system and everyone then sort of games those who game the systems and then before we know it we have digital platforms, right? Uh, where the suddenly is influencers and the, 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 the wannabes and the whatnots. And, and that makes for difficult co cooperation and I kind of Here's my trick to sort of get to, to, to the real nitty gritty of things, right? I'm from the north of Sweden. Whenever I talk with people, whether text or as this in Hangouts, I imagine if we are sitting around a north Sweden coffee table. And that's kind of a such a deep pattern for me. So suddenly you are people, as if sort of again, right? And suddenly there is a conversation because that's kind of the space I'm holding. So I mean, the short answer is kind of, Swedish coffee table holding space for the conversation to happen around that. Excellent. And I, I, I'm resisting the impulse here to, John, to the moment you start talking about Swedish coffee tables to think of IKEA. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, going, <laughs> I'm going to take the conversation, the point to Zara. And, you know, basically, John made some really good points about how things start. And I suppose my next question on that is cooperation. 
why? Oh, I think we all learn from each other. I, did, we can't, one person doesn't know everything. And, you know, even in our small communities, you know, in, in real life, as it were, you know, in person with the people that we know, um, we learn from each other. And I spent many years um, with children, you know, teaching science and also as a poet in the schools. And it, it's a two-way street. Um, we learn from each other. As adults, we learn from the children, and the children learn from each other. Um, could I could I interject on this because I think yeah. I totally agree with what you said, but also doesn't it almost fly in the face of logic? Because although we learn from each other in a very narrow community environment, in the broader mm -hmm. sense of the word, we're also competing against each other because really down at heart, we are from a sociological point of view self-serving units where we look primarily to our own benefits and then secondary to others. So how do we sort of square that circle? I think that's a really a, a difficult question, David, because, you know, we all want food, we want a roof over our head. I mean, there are people in the world that don't have those things. So would, all of us who, you know, have those things and we have um, the interconnectivity of the web, we are, we are blessed. You know, and we need to keep that in mind so that we need to think about everyone as a human being. And I think one of the things that, I mean, I just wanted to note that John's community is called Conversation. And I think through Conversation, we true conversation that is listening and responding on both sides that we can overcome some of those difficulties. I think they're always going to be there. I don't believe that there's going to be a day when humans, as we are now, human beings, are ever going to be totally in accord. I just, I don't see it. There's, there's okay. two things here. Uh, one is in the conversation community, and I will sort of share that in this very thread afterwards. There's not only is Sarah excellent in, in listening skills, right? She has also observational skills bordering on superpowers. I mean, this will, this will be com completely self obvious once you can actually read through that. It was her and a kid, and the kid was playing. It's just a normal, ordinary situation that we've all been through, but the way Sarah observed was a pure delight to read. Uh, and the, the other thing is I do curations on once a week, I call them in Monday Magazine. Uh, the, the best stuff the last week in, in the conversation community. And there's sometimes behind the scenes fierce competition. Who gets to be in the cut and who gets sort of to, to culled away, right? But this is a good competition and fosters cooperation and brings the cooperation almost to a new level because suddenly people realize that well if I bring my A game in terms of um, uh, content, in terms of posts, I get to be in there and am amplified and... and, and okay. uh, I'll stop yeah. you right there yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, I think sure. you made a fantastic point just now and it um, resonates with a comment that's just come in which I'm going to put up and it's Denver Prophet Jr. who says information is currency, which is pretty much what you said, John. You know, we bring in our best, our best ideas, our best uh, game, basically. He says, I see that as an obstacle to cooperation. Mm -hmm. And John, back to you on this one. Yeah, I mean, it, it is an obstacle to cooperation within a fixed mindset. But in this kind of mindset where we are, even by the algorithms, are nudging us towards increasing transparency, authenticity, veracity, and... Uh, let me return to kind of further on that later on. Uh, we can't see this any longer as kind of a zero-sum game. So if, if we bring an abundance mindset, if basically you basically just share, I usually take as kind of a rules of thumb, share 80 or 90% of everything you've got, everything you know, 
and sort of keep some sort of smidgen of sort of strategic importance. I mean, don't give away the crown jewels, basically. Uh, then we can remain competitive, and then this obstacle, which is kind of remains on a purely ob informational lens, becomes a constraint that catalyzes creativity. Okay, so you didn't make the Monday magazine this time around. Well, uh, bring even more of your A game, and you make the cut next time. Right? So okay, okay. Um, well, well, let's take this to Zara now, because Zara, you know, I know you actually an active participant of. John's community, you've experienced his style firsthand, you participate in many conversations, and you also bring in your very, um, your own well-informed point of view from, you know, many different um, areas. So how does all this sort of square in the, in the way of information being shared, ideas being shared, and the individual status that we achieve through um, a community setting and, and an interaction? Well, I think that the competition is enlivening, and and, it's, and you know I'm pretty much a start the contest without me girl, you know, and it's sort of like um, you know when I, <laughs> when I was in the financial world, they always had all these you know contests and all this stuff, and you know sometimes I'd win and sometimes I didn't, but it wasn't that I was focused on. The competition or the prize, or you know, in the case of the conversation community, you know, having one of my posts selected uh, for being curated, all that sort of thing. It's 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 that competition hones our skills, and and when we see someone who's doing what we are doing, whatever that may be, you know. Um, and they're doing it in a way that we would like to emulate, which is really what competition is about. We want to reach that next level. That's why I think it's, I think it's very stimulating to, to do that. What, uh, another point is because of our humanity, we have strengths and weaknesses. Is the competition, competition tells us, oh. Here's one of your weaknesses. You know, you are never going to excel at this particular thing. And acknowledging that gives us more self-knowledge because it means that we can work on that weakness, but we will never be excellent at it. And we can also focus through seeing other people and what they do, we can focus on how we can improve the areas where we do have skills. Mm, okay. Well, <clears throat> this is the last of the social media power talks. We've been through 12 of them now. And looking back, as I have to, every one of them pretty much touches at some point upon the humanity, which both of you now have actually spoken about. So let's um, take the cooperation level to the very human context. And within a humanity, we're certainly imperfect and certainly weak. So how is that handled when we start cooperating with people we are not familiar with? John? Um, I usually uh, put myself in a kind of headspace as if I don't understand other people at all. Uh, which usually works wonders because then uh, I rely pretty much on intuition. I mean it's kind of obvious if you kind of have done any kind of interaction with me kind of off the fly stream of consciousness almost both comments uh, and this is kind of uh, good because then the only one that is unhappy is my inner editor who cringes on a daily basis right but then other people get the benefit of having me responding very quickly and on the fly and they can sort of feel that it's kind of in the now in the moment and uh, what's and all right I mean I think I've done 10,000 Google Plus posts which is appalling really uh, but I wanted to extend trust to the network. I mean, this is kind of beyond just kind of to my chums, to my friends, to my circles. I mean, to really kind of figure out, is there such a thing as a Google Plus network? And what is it? What, what are the graphs? I mean, we could sort of delve into the kind of thing, kind of veracity, volume, velocity, and variety, which is one of yours, David's, uh, brilliant additions and innovations to how we could actually begin to see corporation writ large as if algorithms can actually aid us but we 
we can't fully fathom how algorithm works because they aggregate to the tune of 300, 400, 500 million participants. And I mean, I've been going on public record on kind of, I'm kind of seeing the limitations obviously also to cooperation. How do you cooperate with people where the three valid moves are cat gifts, selfies, and content marketing? Well, the short answer to that is you can't, right? But then this is also a constraint that catalyzes creativity and cooperation, something fierce, because then you need to dream to be in, ingenious in, uh, I mean, if you would asked me a couple of years ago, would you want to sit in a social media marketing uh, power talk? Heavens, no. Right? But having met you, David, and you, Sarah, and a couple of others, and then, well, okay, what's the worst that could happen, right? I could just... <laughs> right? Never um, ask. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, the short answer is uh, possibly our cooperation ability can actually be augmented by throwing ourselves out there in the network, yeah. as if the network exists, right? Fantastic. Okay, on that tone. All right. So let's let's bring in one of the um, comments, um, which is uh, from Brian Shear, who says, "Yes, Zara Al Tayer, finding our weaknesses is a powerful tool to finding our strengths," which pretty much, um, I suppose, uh, echoes the you know when we say um, we need to know ourselves, right? This goes back to Plato and Socrates, where you had to sort of find out who you are in order to make your way in the world, and Essentially, the moment you start cooperating with anybody, um, the T word comes up as in trust, and also we begin to find another thing, which is another V perhaps, which is vulnerability. Because we, as John, you quite rightly said, you put yourself out there, you think it's more important to be fast and quick to respond and being precise and perhaps covering, um, crossing every T and dotting every I. And vulnerability tends to make us more human, it also makes us perhaps more vulnerable. <laughs> so how does that how does that impact the work with in terms of cooperation? And Zara, the question is to you. Oh vulnerability. Well um, you know I had a physical vulnerability two years ago. I was diagnosed with cancer and had surgery, etc. And uh, boy that brings you up short on on being vulnerable. And at the same time, for me, it opened up the world. The world is beautiful when you perceive it, perceive it as life as a gift. And so I think that when communicating with others, and especially new people, I want to go back to that, David, about how we connect with new people and how we open up to them with our vulnerabilities, is that we are permanently vulnerable, we're always vulnerable, and so is that other person. And, and if you approach that conversation from the vulnerability of both of us, each of us together, um, I think I've made several connections on Google Plus in that way. Somebody shares a vulnerability and and I respond to that or say you know um, I've been there and I know I know what it's like or whatever it is and that that opens up the conversation to things that have nothing to do with the original vulnerability is that making any sense? <laughs> you know, how can in many you ways, in, in, personal... in many ways it does actually. <laughs> and, and I, I think um, we need to bring in uh, one of the comments here from David Wells, who says cooperation approaches transcendence as we put a bit of our selfishness aside to be part of something bigger, which is pretty much what you are impacting upon in in terms for a mutual sense of vulnerability to work. Everybody feel needs to feel that they're actually managing to be. Um, part of something which is bigger than themselves perhaps and we're all equally contributing to it, maybe. maybe. Um, another comment, <laughs> another comment <laughs> which is also important <laughs> is, is uh, from William Rock who says, um, I love where this is going for graphing the algorithm and we have tools like Nodex3 to help us somewhat understand the network in some point. Now both of these comments are important in their each in their own way. Now certainly because, um, and I'll bring this question to John now, 
we begin to break down observable kind of interactions and observable patterns in the human behavior, break them down into their component parts, add trust in the equation, whether we do it with you know, total genuine or in a, in a sort of artificial way, it really does not matter in terms of the ultimate effect. And voila, and presto, we have some kind of formula. If we do all this, John, do we not run the risk, perhaps, of creating an entirely artificial environment where nothing is real and nothing is genuine and everything is part of some kind of game plan? Yeah, I mean, this is... Uh, I would probably plead uh, by Hinger. Als ob, als, as if, and but even more importantly, I would sort of plead uh, two other guys, uh, one another dead guy, Marcus Aurelius, who basically would ask, suggest to us that what is its true nature? I mean, to always keep to that, right? to and that kind of evading, uh, hopefully, the risk of sort of gaming things to death. Right? I, I could give you a proximetric. If I see in any which thread, in conversation community or, or outside in the public stream. Someone puts a comment in, and it gets four or five pluses. <laughs> then I'm absolutely certain that that sort of hits a note, right? It is just a, it touches the string, right? This is someone that put some modicum of heart in. There's vulnerability already there, and there's a proximetric. So there's a bridge already between the ineffable and the quantifiable. So those are kind of what I call gems, right? And when people do that. And sometimes it's just one or two pluses, right? And then I still kind of quote at length and say, this long quote is again, right? Because I want to sort of make the other person fully aware that there's another guy across the pond, possibly, if I'm in Sweden and that, that other person is in, in the States. There's someone here that actually thought well of what you just shared, right? And this is, as systems go, Google Plus is far from perfect, but here and there, there's kind of these islands of vulnerability that are both transcendent, to David Wells' excellent point, but also I happen to kind of just weave in the Nodex, right? I happen to know that behind Nodex, there's another brilliant guy, Lee Smallwood. So both David Wells and Lee Smallwood brings inside the tools, frameworks, platforms they're using themselves. Right? And that's kind of is what makes it all worth it, at, le at least to me. Brilliant. Okay. Now, you, both of you, as we had this discussion, um, you mentioned listening and you mentioned being vulnerable, being open, and being human. We've got a couple of um, comments which are worth looking at. Deborah Rock says, vulnerability show that you are sensitive to the choices that you make. It connects us to each other to support each other and causes each of us to pull at our strengths to support one another, which is a very sharing, very open kind of approach. And um, Denver Prophet Jr. again says, an unnamed North American Airlines had found themselves the brunt of jokes on Twitch several months ago because their employees in charge of their Twitter accounts failed to actively listen to customer complaints. That would be acknowledging, and he continues, um, vulnerability and communicating plans for improvement if they had actually done that. So um, both of these basically uh, make the same point. Um, in terms of, uh, of, of that. And if we take the next question now to um, John and uh, again, and um, the, the question really is, what practical takeaways can we take um, with this in terms of um, the approach which we take in creating greater cooperation in our interactions? How do we practically approach it, really? The only way we can do that is to be very clear on what's our story. I mean, our real story, our analog story. And that is kind of a larger story that actually can be shared, uh, even though I do my best kind of sharing with you the, 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 my North Swedish clan and so on, and my coffee table. Uh, but then figuring out, with the aid of your own rules of thumb, your own intuition, your own heart, skills, passion, whatnot, and guided by the, the algorithms, which I think is a key part if we are going to make any kind of sense of a digital environment, uh, and figuring out what small select parts of our real story can be packaged into some kind of a digital uh, chunks. And whether we call them tweets or posts or comments or hangouts, doesn't really matter, right? As long as there's part of us in them. Okay, okay, on that, on that note, let's take the same question to Zara, please, because Zara, and, and the reason I'm taking this to you, Zara, is because 
already there is a comment addressed at you from Peter Hatherley, who's in New Zealand at the moment. You can see how global the audience is. And he says, understanding human nature and especially the ability to listen to a voice that is not your own is absolutely vital. And this is not an easy skill to uh, have or develop. So Zara, to you now, this kind of practicality on setting up. Okay, and okay. from the practicality point of view, I think it has to do with giving back. I know, just take the Google Plus community as an example, as that we come here and Google really doesn't help us understand how to be here in the Google Plus universe. And so we pretty much learn from other people. And I, I know I've, I've shared this before that, um, you know, reading David Ammerland was how I got to the Google Plus community. <laughs> Uh, but uh, and so I got here, but I still didn't know what to do, and I was experimenting and trying things. And there were so many people that generously helped and volunteered information, and um, and said, you know, you, you need to hardwire your computer, you know, when you're online, you know, all this, all these, all the little details that come together to make your presence on, um, on Google Plus more viable and and uh, that the cooperation David I think comes into play when we give back in that way to people that we notice they pop up I noticed someone several months ago who popped up on the Sunday read for example and and they pretty much said, hey, I'm lost, but this is cool, you know. Uh, and so we start a conversation about, you know, being on Google Plus with them and, and you know, they're going gangbusters. I, 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 but I think that giving back and, you know, this sounds cornball, but it's true, sharing, you know, sharing information um, is, is really um, important to help people learn how to accomplish tasks and when people learn to accomplish tax, they, tasks they have a personal feeling of just going back to what we were talking about before uh, a personal feeling of accomplishment you know if they want to take it to the level of competition they may but you know that's their personal choice but that the cooperation grows by the willingness of all of us to have that interchange of information and to share. Absolutely. And I think on that note, again, we have a couple of uh, sterling uh, comments. One is from Molly Youngblood Geiger, who says, I agree with Zara, Zara Altair, giving back is key in one of my practices, and also try to help out by answering technical questions, which I think is pretty much what you said, Zara, mm -hmm. in terms of how everybody feels here. And um, um, Sheila Hainsley says, um, be very clear on your story, John Keldon, and I think again this sort of feeds into what John told us about developing a kind of narrative which is very clear, I suppose, in the ways we are trying to address things. And we're approaching near the end of the time, and I feel like the conversation is only just start got going. So we'll we'll we we'll sort of try to extend it by a few minutes, but I have real real constraints on this because of the format, so we haven't really got a lot of time. Um, what I would like to do is basically um, ask both of you that, you know, if you were to start again from in your Google Plus journey in terms of the connections you have made, the um, path you took, and the development that you've actually reached, if you were to start again knowing almost all the things that you know now, what would you do differently? And let's ask this one to John, please. I would probably uh, say just quite a lot more at some junctures when I kind of thought well I'm Swedish I don't know, know English half well enough to sort of take the plunge and so I mean there's there's been a couple of those and I can sort of look back and say dang right why didn't I and I'm, this this is kind of a it's not, it's not a very human moment John because you know I think 
you know, it has nothing to do with being Swedish, and it has a lot to do with being human and sometimes tired and overworked and multitasking. And we've all, and I speak personally here, we've all been on the wrong side of that. So I think you know, this is this is a very human thing you just said. Yeah, I mean, also the the context, right? We can see is that ninety percent of all the people with active accounts are actually are here reading and and somehow participating, but they're not actually sort of sharing original stuff, right? So it's it's a kind of very real dynamic and I think it's a very human dynamic. So if we can have sort of forgiving eyes. I mean I know the conversation community there's a whole bunch of brilliant people, but they're introverts, right? So I almost have to kill them before they actually go out and sort of do a post. Right? <laughs> well so threaten them at the very least, surely <laughs> <laughs> So I mean this, but I mean to, as a general rule, right? I mean, uh, and I understand people who are good. Goodness, I don't know half of the things I that, that these are. I mean, but forget about that, right? This, this. I mean, this is kind of where that that uh, the cartoon guy. Where there's no one that is youer than you, and even <laughs> as it's very very corny, it also happens to be the absolute goddamn truth. Right? So it's what we could do, really. I mean, you, you just yeah, take a yeah. punch. Exactly. John, thank you for that one. And the same question to Zara. Zara, if you were to do something differently, and knowing everything that you do now, what would it be? Uh, it would be the, pretty much what John said, you know, uh, and that would be to to be myself much, much earlier. I, you know, I was, I don't know, I guess you'd call it shy, you know, and, and, uh, and, and one of the ways that people helped me was they said, you know, you're posting this cool image, but you're not saying anything about it. Tell us what, you know, why you liked it. And I'm like, oh God, you know. Uh, and uh, you know, now I just now now it's like my personality is is much better reflected on Google Plus, and that I will just blip out stuff that I think, you know, it just sort of comes out, instead of coming out of my mouth, it's coming out of, you know, my fingertips on the keyboard, but it's the same thing, it's like, um, so, it's the same thing John said, it's would it require Would it require a greater degree of bravery at the beginning, do you think, from your part? Yes, a greater degree of bravery. That's a very good way of putting it, David. Okay, and uh, we have one final comment to look at from Brian Shear, who says, mutual sharing of information allows for all parties to grow stronger. And um, with that, we are pretty much reaching the end, really. Um, final takeaways, uh, John? I just love that Brian Shea uh, excerpt. Right? I mean, this is... Um even if we only look at this as information, I mean, it's, it's abundantly clear that it's not, right? It's people. Uh, but even if only as information, uh, it's... I could never have been where I am today. I mean, I've launched a whole company out of the conversation community with, together with people I've never met in real life just by sharing information. So if that doesn't sort of convince everyone else. I don't know what, right? I mean, just share stuff and, and see where it goes, right? Exactly. Be open and generous. And Zara? <laughs> final takeaway? Uh, final takeaway about cooperation, let's, let's be on topic here, is that the more you are yourself, the more uh, people resonate with you. I don't, I don't know a better way to put it. But that, and when that resonance happens, other things happen. You form a cooperative spirit. Um, the biggest topic that we really didn't get to talk about today that I would love to talk about is how we take this outside into the world where we were talking in the green room earlier, David, about the things that are happening in the world that are not cooperative and are detrimental to humanity and I would love to revisit and and talk about that at some time because those are things that I feel very strongly need to be need to be addressed so but but for cooperation be yourself be open and engage I saw all the stuff you say all the time David <laughs> 
brilliant. Thank you very much for both of you. It's absolutely fantastic. And Zari, you're absolutely right. There's a lot of things to actually discuss. I think we just started a conversation about where the digital domain is actually leading us towards and what impact it is beginning to have. In the real world, we all live in where we don't have a choice. We actually have to be there. This has been the last um, social media power talk for the year. It's probably going to come back next year. I'm not quite sure yet. Plans are still being discussed in a slightly different format for social media today. Thank you very much, all of you who watched today. Thank you very much for watching over the past 12 months. And hopefully, each conversation has helped you understand things a little bit better and has certainly, I hope, fueled your own thoughts and insights and development and journey in Google Plus and in the greater digital domain. This is David Amorland saying goodbye. Bye-bye.